Hi everyone, I just want to start off by giving a quick update on what's going on in the heavens. As, as you can see here from Sky Live, this is what it, it looks like in the heavens currently. And as you can see, Jupiter and Venus are still very close together. It still almost looks like the conjunction is still currently taking place. It's only when you zoom into it that you can tell that Venus has actually moved to the left of Jupiter a little bit, whereas yesterday it had started out on the right side of Jupiter until it was exactly aligned with Jupiter right around the time of sunset in Eastern Standard Time. And then now you see that it's to the left of Jupiter. So it could be that this prophecy is still valid, that anything could still take place at any moment. Like I had mentioned in my last video, Jesus is seated at the right hand of, of the Father until it's time to make his enemies his footstool. And now you see Venus to the left. So it could be that this prophecy or what I had talked about yesterday could still unfold at any moment. And it could still be that the Genesis 49 10 prophecy based on the understanding of Jupiter being the scepter could still be valid at least for the next few days up until Jupiter disappears from view around about September 2nd. But what I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to present another theory because what I did is I thought maybe it would be a good time to revisit the prophecy and just try to reassess it a little bit to see if there's any other possible ways that this prophecy could be fulfilled if there's another understanding. And I believe I've come up with another possible interpretation for the prophecy. But what I want to do is I just want to back up to the beginning in Genesis 49 1 where it says and Jacob called unto his sons and said gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days and so I just wanted to point this out because I do believe this is a prophecy for the last days I believe that's an indication right here starting with verse 1 that this entire prophecy is concerning the last days but if you skip over to where it starts talking about Judah, and I started looking at this from verse 9, just one verse before the Genesis 49.10 prophecy. If you go back just one verse, what I found was very interesting once you look at it in the Greek, and I do believe this is definitely referring to the Messiah, and I just want to show you how that is once you look at it in the Greek and how this first part in Genesis 49.9 is referring to the Lord's first coming and it appears that starting with verse 10 it's talking about the Lord's second coming because when you read this in English I'll just do that first it says Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey my son Thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him? But when you look at this in the Greek, I think it gives a, a really clear picture of the Lord's first coming. And I just want to show you that because I just thought this was really interesting. And the first word that comes up is this word right here, which is the word skimnos in the Greek. And I looked it up. And you can see the word right here. I wasn't able to get it to come up in this other website, but I got it to come up in Wiktionary. And you see the definition here is cub, whelp, especially a lion's whelp. And then you can also see the images that are over here for the word. So this is talking about a lion cub. This word right here is lion. So a lion cub of Judah from... And then I'll show you this word right here. This 
this word means a shoot, an embryo, a spring, a blossom, an offspring. So it's saying that as a lion cub of Judah, I also forgot to mention it also means embryo. So a lion cub of Judah from an embryo, my son, will rise or, or you will rise. And you see over here the prophecy is being given to Judah in the Old Testament, but this is a representation of the lion of the tribe of Judah. So this is prophetic to the Lord's first coming as well as to the last days. And it's saying as a lion cub out of Judah from uh, an embryo or a shoot, an offspring, my son will rise or you will rise and then fall back. And I'll show you this word. It means to fall back, lay oneself back, fall back, give ground, lifeless of style, to be given up. So it's someone willingly falling back or, or lying down. It's basically to fall willingly. And then over here, this word means to go to sleep. Lull, put to sleep, fall asleep, go to bed, and then over here it says of the sleep of death. So it has connotations of death, and then over here it also has connotations of sexual intercourse, which also comes into play if you've watched my video prior to the last one, because this would be referring to the confirmation, or more particularly the, the consummation. Of the covenant. So he's saying, as a lion cub of Judah from an embryo, my son, you, you will rise up and fall down and sleep as a lion. So at this point, he's grown up. And as, and then this word is it's talking about a young lion once again when you look at it in the Greek. In the English, it's saying as an old lion, but if you look at it, and, and this is just in the King James, none of the other versions say old lion, because when you look at it in the Hebrew, it doesn't really state an old lion, it's just a lion, a, a grown up lion, not necessarily an old lion. And all the other versions, if you look at it, the other translations, none of them really say an old lion. They just say as a lion or a lioness. So there's no indication of age. It's just a grown-up lion when it says an old lion. But in the Greek, it's still referring to as a young lion. And it's saying, and as a young lion, who will rouse him. And I'll show you this word. And you can see the word right here means to awaken, rouse, rouse, stir up, wake up, and over here it says raise from the dead. So it has the connotations of raising from the dead. So I do believe this right here is referring to the Lord's first coming, to the death and resurrection. And I'll, I'll just read how, how it reads in the Greek once again. As a young lion or a cub lion, Judah, from a embryo or a shoot, an offspring, my son will rise up 
and fall back and go to sleep, as in the sleep of death, or also having connotations of consummating the covenant as well. And then, well, it doesn't say and then, and then it just goes on to say, as a lion, and, okay, so this part, as a lion, is describing this part. Okay, so it's saying, a young lion of Judah from an embryo, my son, will rise up and fall back and go to sleep as a lion. So now he's grown up. So by the time he's grown up, that's when this part, falling asleep and uh, falling back and going to sleep as a lion, and as a young lion again, who can raise him up, rouse him, or waken, waken him from the dead. And then it goes on to the second part, which I believe is referring to the second coming, because this one is the death and resurrection of the Lord's first coming. And then it goes on to talk about the second coming. So it goes on to say, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And what I wanted to present is that maybe we're misinterpreting the scepter, what's being represented by the scepter. It, it may be that it's not even being represented by Jupiter. This could, in fact, be a sign preceding the Lord's coming, just as the Bethlehem star originally, with the Lord's birth, was a sign of, of the Lord's coming. But it could be that the sun is actually what's being referred to as the scepter, because the sun is currently in the constellation Leo, but if you follow the scepter going on to the constellation Virgo, and you go into the prophecy concerning Virgo, which I do believe refers to the rapture as well, if you go to Revelation 12, and you just follow the scepter, you'll see that the scepter is mentioned once again, and it says, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So you see that the scepter now is being transferred to the constellation Virgo. You see right here it says royal scepter for the rod scepter staff so the the scepter goes from the constellation leo from between the feet of leo and it will not depart or be eclipsed according to the greek remember the word used in the greek was eclipsed and the bible tells us that the sun is going to once the lord comes it's going to turn black as sackcloth of hair so it's not going to be eclipsed until Shiloh comes, but then you see that the resurrection or the the rapture is described in Revelation 12 when the Lord, the man-child is born who rules with an iron scepter. And, and Virgo is at that time clothed with the sun. So it could be that the scepter, the sun, needs to transition from Leo to Virgo, and of course the sun represents Jesus as well. So it could be, as I had mentioned in some of the comments in my last video, that the sun itself needs to move to this position in order for the prophecy concerning the scepter to be fulfilled. And I'm about out of time, so I'm going to have to continue in the next video. Thank you.